Did you describe this piece as heaven on earth, making you feel like it's heaven on earth? And are there other pieces that make you feel that way? And um, you also mentioned about miracles. Are you pertaining to any miracles? <laughs> For the young musicians, um, I want to ask you, um, how were you able to do this? I mean, it's so amazing to see you at this age have this type, uh, this level of mastery. So I was just wondering what it took from you to get here. Yes. Wow, thank you for my ates. <laughs> Um, for me, this is heavenly music because of the serenity I feel and the magic I feel that the music expresses. And usually it's slow movements that would give me that kind of feeling of peace and calm and like everything is perfect. There's absolutely nothing wrong in the world and everything is just fine. In fact, Yesterday when I was practicing, I thought, hmm, maybe I'd like to have this music played if I'm already dying. Because it's just, I mean, it's such beautiful music to transport you to the next, to, to heaven, you know? Anyway, I'll give the young musicians a chance to answer. This piece is took a lot of practice and sacrifices. I mean, literally. I mean, I'm enrolled in a normal school. I have classes during morning until afternoon. So I wake up 5 a.m. to practice for two hours before going to school. And then two hours again, or two two to three hours after school. And then I will do my projects, my homeworks, and everything. And when I have no classes, I, I spend my time practicing for five to seven hours a day. So, this takes a lot of practice. It isn't easy as what others think, think of. Uh, well, despite the sacrifices that we had, um, uh, we technically didn't practice that much as a group, but uh, we bonded together uh, even if we practiced less than 10 times together. <laughs> And from the first time we practiced together, we already knew we had a bond <laughs> with the music and the people. <laughs> so, yeah. Any other questions? Tony. Mary, there's the two or three seems to be very accomplished at their very young age. So, can you share with us who are their professors? Who are teaching them? Who made this uh, young man so accomplished at that young age? Thank you. Uh, well, my teacher, uh, I guess he would be really proud if someone asked that question because he would he would be really mad at me if I <laughs> didn't mention him because uh, he always insists that uh, when my teacher asks me. When someone asks me, well, you play so good, who's your teacher? And he always answers for me, I'm his teacher. <laughs> uh, and the teacher in question is named Arnold Josue. He's a professor at the USD, and he's a storage teacher, and uh, yeah, he's the MSO. He's the principal cellist of the MSO. <laughs> I think I should also mention my two teachers before my current teachers now. My first teacher is Sir Cedric Lachanal. He's a French guy. And he taught me for about uh, six years, I guess. And then I, I transferred to Professor Arturo Molina, the former conductor of Manila Symphony Orchestra. And now I'm currently with uh, Professor Diomedes Saraza, the concert master of Manila Symphony Orchestra. Actually, besides um, all the practice and the wonderful teachers they have, I think we have to acknowledge their very supportive parents because the parents are working just as hard. They're driving them. She lives in Bulacan, and we have rehearsals in Alabang. Today, it took them more than three hours to just come here. And the parents are always there showing their support. And I think that's part of their success as well.
Maybe one last question? Tell us about your professor, your teacher. <laughs> oh, that's quite long because I'm not as young as I look. <laughs> um, but my, I can tell you that my, my main teacher in the Philippines was Stella Brimo. Um, and she was a wonderful influence to me and a kind of role model. She was not just a teacher, but she was like a second mother. And she gave me a lot of support. And she used to be a very rich woman. And then she had some problems. She had to work herself. And she worked so hard. She taught so hard as much as she could to support her family, despite having been brought up as a rich girl. But that was all that mattered for her was her music. And then she moved to Canada, where she passed away. In Canada, she continued to teach until she was 96 years old. Um, so when, when she was my teacher, she was already 80 years old. I didn't realize during here, during the time I was young, I thought maybe she was 50 or something. Um, the age, understanding of age was, was very different as, as a young person. So she was my main teacher here and she continues to inspire me and live in me. And that's one of the reasons why I try to give as much as I, had, as I can back to the youth here because that's what she did. Um, when I won competitions, she gave me a scholarship even though my family could afford to pay for lessons. She said, you deserve a scholarship and you don't have to pay um, for all the, for the full fee. So she was a very generous and loving woman. So thank you so much again. The next concert is on March 25. A versatile pianist is going to come and play for you. His name is Ding Dong Fiel, and he's one of the most sought after pianists in the country. He's not just a pianist, he's also a composer, a conductor, a musical arranger, and he doesn't just play classical music, he does other genres as well. And he's going to bring with him his equally talented friend and colleague, flutist Nico Dioneda. They will play a French program including works by Poulenc and Claude Bolling. Um, who's composed jazzy, fun set of pieces. So I hope you all come next month, March 25th. Thank you so much.